Now we will see the expression for your fringe width. So we have seen the condition for that your constructive and destructive interference. So for that just let this is the source. Then again we are just going to see these are the two sources S1 and S2 through which the light is going to pass. This is the screen on which you are going to observe that interference pattern. Yeah, so this is the source of light. So this is how we can show and then definitely if I just consider this the point which is at the center. So you can say that there is a maximum intensity at produced. Let's say now another point. Yeah, so now if I just consider in this way. So let's say this is the point which is situated at a certain distance. Yeah, so let's see that. So this point now is point P and this is let's say O. So now the two light which has been just passes through that your S1 and S2 will take the different amount of time to reach at point P. So what is the path difference? So in this case the path difference that you can write it down which is the S2P minus S1P. So if you see that now you have to calculate the value of that your path difference. So the distance between these two sources I will say that it is nothing but the small d. Okay. So again this is how we can write it down. Yeah. So let's say this is obviously the distance between the screen and these two sources is d. So to find this part difference obviously you have to find S2P minus S1P. So what we will do over here. So S2P that is nothing but let's say which is your S2P square. So this one I can write it down. So which is nothing but your S2P square. So that is nothing but d square. Again I will say that. So this is again which is at just situated at a distance x. So this point is situated at a distance x. Then further I will say that. So this distance is d by 2 and this is also d by 2. Fine. So this S2P square you can write it down. That is a d square and again that is hypotenuse that is x plus d by 2 whole square. So this is first equation. So similarly you can write it down S1P square which is a d square plus x minus d by 2 whole square. So that is your second equation. So now just take the subtraction of these two that is S2P square minus S1P square. So this is d square plus x plus d by 2 whole square. Again now do the subtraction for that. So that is d square plus x minus d by 2 whole square. Yeah, obviously this is how you can write it down. Now just simplify this. So if I just simplify it, so then I will get that. Obviously this is d square, then this is x square, then this one xd and again this is d square upon 4. Now this one is a minus as it is. So this is d square plus x square. Then this is again minus x into d and plus this is d square upon 4. So further just simplify open that bracket. So this is d square plus x square plus xd plus d square upon 4 then minus d square minus x square plus xd minus d square upon 4. So if you see that so what are the different terms getting cancelled d square d square getting cancelled d square by 4 minus d square by 4 x square x square so this is 2xd so this part difference that what you got which now I can write it down so this is s2p square minus s1p square that I can write it down as a 2xd so a square minus b square that is s2p minus s1p again in bracket s2p plus s1p is equals to 2xd fine so now again further what we can do over here so this is s2p yeah so this is s2p minus s1p and again 2xd upon s2p plus s1p so if we can say that the distance between that d yeah so the distance between this d is very large so in that case we can assume that this s1p and s2p they are approximately same 
and again which is we can say that which is approximately d so i can write it down obviously that is a 2xd and which is your 2d so 2 to get cancel so this part difference you can write it down as a xd upon d okay so this is how you can find the part difference for this case so that is your s2p minus s1p and which is your xt upon d yeah so this is the part difference or that is what we call as a pd so now again for constructive interference at point p which is situated at a distance x so there might be constructive interference there might be destructive interference so this part difference that is a part difference is xd upon d so for constructive interference again we can write it down one more condition over here so for constructive i will write it down the short so we know that for constructive interference if this part difference is multiple of your lambda then it will produce the constructive interference then you can say simple that is a n lambda d upon d and this is the distance of your nth bright band yeah so this is for the constructive your fringe yeah so that you will get at a distance you are obviously xn from the center yeah so this is for your nth bright band so similarly you can get the condition for the destructive for destructive also you can find the condition for your destructive interference so this part difference so which is nothing but xd upon d so that has to be equals to again we can say that so for destructive interference so that is a 2n minus 1 and again which is lambda by 2 so this x is equals to 2n minus 1 lambda d upon 2d yeah so this is the distance of nth that is your dark fringe yeah so nth dark band is lies at a certain distance so this is again the distance of your nth dark band so now what is this fringe width which you have to calculate over here so fringe width is nothing but the distance between the two successive bright band or two successive dark band so let's say when you're saying that xn is equals to n lambda upon d so the distance of n plus 1 n plus 1 lambda upon d so what is that distance now x plus that is n plus 1 minus of x of n so if you do this calculation that is a lambda upon d yeah so again similarly you can say that so which is n lambda upon d fine so this is how you can just do that so n lambda d upon d yeah so that is a n lambda d upon d so this is how we can write it down over here also so for this particular case obviously we can write it down that is a n lambda d upon d fine so just n lambda d upon d okay so this is how we can just write it down yeah and this is your small d yeah fine so now what you have to take common so you can take lambda d upon d common and this is n plus 1 minus n so obviously this is what you can say that so that is a lambda d upon d fine so this is what we will call as a fringe width and that is given as a beta so beta you can say that which is a lambda d upon d yeah fine so this is what is the expression for your fringe width so beta is equals to lambda d upon d so that is the expression for your fringe width similarly for you can calculate for the dark that is a band also so for the dark band we have just seen the condition that is a 2n minus 1 lambda d upon d yeah and similarly x of n plus 1 that also you can calculate that is a n plus 1 minus 1 then further that is a lambda d upon d so if you do again the separation between them so x of n plus 1 minus of x of n again do this calculation you will get the same thing so which is nothing but lambda d upon d so this is what we will call as a fringe width so which is nothing but the separation between the two successive bright band or two successive your dark band so in this diagram also you can represent so over here at the center you will get that bright band and according to that the next one you will get the alternate bright and dark band yeah so it goes on like that yeah so the same thing you can represent or the intensity distribution curve so which is equal 
so each bright band is obviously of same intensity or dark band is of same intensity that you can show yeah so this is how you can represent over there so where i can just show that so all of them are of your same that amplitude yeah so their amplitude is same so this is how we can find the expression for your fringe width for this particular case so where it is only the difference between that and which we have got it that is a lambda d upon b